The business you're growing is important. You're making sure you have the best plan laid out, the best materials you can get, and you're pouring all of your time and energy into the creativity and mental demand that starting a business requires. So why aren't you giving your mind every advantage it can get? Alpha Brain is that advantage, and you can try it now by clicking on the Alpha Brain banner on the AAR Podcast store page. When you order your Alpha Brain through this podcast, you're not only supporting this show, you're giving yourself and your business every advantage to succeed. I can tell the difference when I'm using Alpha Brain and when I'm not. Clinically proven, all natural, and now you can order it through the AAR Podcast website. Just visit www.theaarpodcast.com, click on the store tab, and order your Alpha Brain today. Your business is worth it. And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. Welcome to the After Action Review. I'm Rod Rodriguez. And in this episode, I had the privilege to sit down with two amazing women in the world of veteran entrepreneurship, Emily McMahon of Capital Post and Seda Goff of Bunker Labs DC. Before I go any further, I'm going to warn you, if you don't have a pen and paper handy to take notes, then first of all, you're not prepared. Pen and paper is the standard you failed, but these two ladies drop some serious knowledge in this episode about entrepreneurship, about business. This is going to make you think. I promise you're going to want to take notes. We also talk about Bunker Lab's upcoming event, the 2018 DC Muster. This is the networking event of the year for you entrepreneurs out there, or if you're just thinking about starting a business, you got to go to this event. Guys, do not miss out. Click on the link on the podcast page and get your tickets today. Use promo code AARMUSTER, I say again, all one word, AARMUSTER to get $10 off general admission. No excuses now not to be there. You get $10 off, all right? So check out the AAR Muster 2018 in D.C. I think it's the first one of the year. They're all over the country, all right? Bunker Labs, go check out their website. All of these links and more are right there on the AAR Podcast website for this podcast episode. All right, let's get to it. Emily McMahon and Seda Goff. Uh, can we get your perspective as a female? And it literally was written like, uh, like women are important in today's world. You know, like it, it's of just, course it's, we are. It's like why is that even an issue? I, and I and I said, appreci- but I appreciate but I appreciate that yeah. they were like we're writing this as not females and we're writing this as um, you know not having served and we're just really trying to get the perspective of what it like how a woman right. in the service might receive this and i really appreciated them at least being aware of it but yeah it was kind of written from like that i texted like the so 50s weird. So. i'm not gonna lie like i think the idea of asking a female from a female perspective right do you have another right i have right. a human perspective i have an entrepreneurship perspective yeah. i mean you, you do have different perspectives as let's say um, your your age or your experience or, you know, your role in the family um, and how that plays into what you're trying to do as an entrepreneur, especially if it's like tied with your product or your mm-hmm. brand or whatever. But otherwise, you know, one of my biggest pet peeves is when you're going around the the stores looking at um, apparel for little little girls, they have shirts that say, I'm brave, I'm smart, I'm going to take on the world. Do you, do you need to be reminded that you can do that? Like, cause you're basically perpetuating yeah. the fact that you need to be told that you are that yeah. as opposed to you just, of course, like you don't have a my, boy's shirt that no, says that. No, I'm trying to think of my son has a shirt that says I'm brave and I'm going to go out and conquer the world. Yeah. I no. He has Star Wars shirts. He has Star Wars shirts. director of the founder program here at Capital Post and uh, the managing director of Bunker Labs in DC. Um, 
I am not a military veteran, uh, but I have worked in the veteran space before, as well as the startup space is what is what I actually do bring to the table here at Capital Post and Bunker Labs. Um, I've had a number of startups that some have gone well, some have not, um, but have given me a good patchwork of experience to be able to pull from. Um, most recently, I had a company that helped companies from around the world enter the U.S. market from doing product market fit through getting them set up to launching and go to market and going to market and getting their first customer. And that's what actually brought me to Bunker yeah. um, when I had served on a panel with some folks that were part of Bunker Labs. And um, they brought me in to do some coaching and mentoring of the companies here, um, part of the cohort program, uh, startup school here at Capital Post and Bunker Labs. So when, yeah. you know, as we got to know each other better and, you know, Emily said, asked me if I'd be interested in coming yes. on board. And I said, absolutely. Um, you know, loved the people here, loved everything about it. Um, I mean, my husband would ask me, so, you know, what does your week look like this week? And I'd be like, oh, I'm on client site this, I'm client, I'm going to bunker on Tuesday. And he goes, oh, thank God, you always come back in the best mood. So I thought that might be a good, good indicator that that might be a good fit for, for me. Yeah. So Never bet. Thank tell you. more yeah. about our first meeting, <laughs> <laughs> how we first met. So yeah. I still remember meeting Zeta the first time and being like, wow. So. All right. Yeah. Let's make so, so I'm Emily McMahon, I'm executive director of Capital Post. Um, in terms of my service, I was uh, Army veteran. I was a military police officer. Um, I think what's significant about my service is I graduated from the military academy in 2001. So I graduated in two, June 2001 and then uh, September 2001. Obviously, 9-11 happened. And so um, my year group was kind of sent uh, everywhere right after that. Um, I was lucky enough to be sent to the Pentagon right after 9-11, and that was my first kind of foray into D.C. and kind of why I came back and had a great experience. Um, and then, like m many post-9-11 veterans, I went to Afghanistan, I went to Iraq, and then um, uh, when I returned from Iraq, decided it was time to transition to the civilian world. I was very uh, fortunate to connect with one of my classmates from the military academy who was starting a government contracting company. And that's really where I feel like I cut my teeth in business um, and also really reaped a lot of the benefits of the veteran business community, which ultimately fueled kind of what, what we have today at Capital Post. Amazing. Yeah. So what is Bunker Labs? Well, I think um, I think with that question, we have to take actually one step back Let's and kind of talk back. about what is Capital Post first. Sounds that good. will sort of um, lead into that. So um, Capital Post is a 501c3 that teaches military veterans and their spouses how to think and act like entrepreneurs. I think that that's really important. It's the umbrella organization that um, Bunker Labs resides in. Um, we do that a couple different ways. Uh, one is our gorgeous space here, this place um, of the veteran business community. We always say where business meets the DC business or the where business meets the veteran business community here in um, here in Alexandria. Um, we have about 32 companies that work out of here on a daily basis, either virtually or in person. And it's really the home and the foundation for um, how a lot of our programming is, is carried out. Um, we have two programs that focus on startups and also focus on the personal and career piece. Um, and Seda, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, but I think it's important to know the foundation of kind of how this program came to be here in Washington, D.C. and kind of how we work with Bunker Labs. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So at about at the genesis of Capital Post, um, this idea of Bunker Labs and having an organization that helped military veterans and their spouses start businesses came up and mm -hmm. and Emily connected with the founder of Bunker Labs, who's out of um, who's out of Chicago. And, in the, you know, at the same time over the last four and a half, five mm -hmm. years now, um, have now grown this program over 17 chapters around the country. Um, we are we run the DC chapter here for this region, um, and basically what Bunker Labs does is it gives uh, net, uh, network access to military veterans and their spouses that are looking at 
pursuing entrepreneurship or who need help in building or growing their businesses. Um, and network access includes, um, we have monthly happy hours called Bunker Brews. We do a yearly event called The Muster um, that brings the whole business community together um, to help showcase the veterans that are in building businesses or even just to connect everybody together. Um, as well as we have an online uh, program called Launch Lab that people can self-directed uh, programming that goes through how to build a business. Um, and then what we do here that, you know, takes that a step further is we do a, um, actually a lot of coaching and mentoring one-on-one -on -one with the companies. So, you know, we'll sit with the company, triage where they're at. Um, you know, one thing that we say a lot is we meet the veteran where they are mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. trying to put them into buckets. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think that everybody, depending on what company they have, what industry they're looking into, what stage they're at, what experience level they have, they have all are different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, based on that, we, we bring together subject matter experts that can help guide them in their process. Um, so in that regard, we, we tend to tap into other programs, but we are that guiding force through the, their entire life cycle as opposed to just being a boot camp for two days or, you know, a startup school for a few months. Um, so you're here for the long run. Yes. We're here for the long run. We're their first free employee, <laughs> first intern, yeah. their biggest cheerleader. And, um, and sometimes they're like psychologists yeah. that helps them walk through, you know, this whole crazy process of being an entrepreneur. It's this, this space and this place and this feeling and this place of, um, you know, feeling like you have a home and a place that you can connect and be yourself and ask you know, the dumb questions and the scary ones. Entrepreneurship is a very lonely thing sometimes. And oh, yeah. especially for veterans that are transitioning into it, I think they often feel like they have to know all the answers and they can't show weakness or any sort of vulnerability when it comes to um, you know, this endeavor. And so I think Sade and I are very mindful of creating a space and a place that's very much based on a framework, but also based, as she said, meeting people where they are and connecting with them emotionally so they feel like there's a resource that has their back. And not only us, but really this bigger community. It's much more than just sated me. It's this, you know, big slice of the Washington, D.C. business community, both veteran and non-veteran. And I think that's something we're both very adamant about is bringing bringing the veterans almost to the civilian business community. I mean, I feel like I say civilian and, and people are like, what does that mean? So um, really trying to... Um, connect and as we always say like pass the baton off to that next resource but there's always a home here with us you can always come back and connect with us as necessary but we really try to yeah. you know almost um, force people out of the nest but you're always welcome here tell me how you two met sure <laughs> so and i can i can actually like remember the exact moment so um one of the things that we do as part of helping start businesses is our cohorts so we have a nine-week startup school where we take folks through um, a framework, you know, how to start and grow a business. And so um, as part of that process, Seda came in and was presenting on, I guess it was like ecosystem development or lean, or we heard about her and brought her in. And I just remember sitting there being like, wow, like this woman knows what she's talking about. Um, excellent facilitator. Uh, very dynamic and engaging and knows her stuff and can deliver it in a way that I just hadn't seen a lot of our um, mentors or consultants uh, engage in that same way. And so um, that was kind of our first meeting. And I don't even know if you, rec you know, remember that me sitting in the sidelines um, as part as a participant in that session, but that's when I first met Seda. So. And, and I, what I do remember about that was mm -hmm. just, this feeling of when I was here, I was like, oh, this yeah. feels like home. Yeah. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'd been pretty passionate about the veteran space for years, um, having worked at the VA, you know, consulted at the VA before. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and then 
just it, the startup community and the the what these veteran entrepreneurs brought to the table was just fun to work with because they had such great work ethic. You know, did they have holes in, you know, in their process? Yeah. So does everybody, but it's, you know, it was fun to really dig in and the ideas that were coming out of it and, and the group and the resources here. I was just like, Oh, this is, this is a lot of fun. So can I share the story real quick of how, Please. how we met? Yeah. So um, I was in the process of looking for a new director, really, of like our founders program and hence the Bunker Labs program. And, and my requirements, I felt like, were very specific. So I wanted somebody who had um, startup experience, meaning they'd gone through it. They understood the challenges. They had some, you know, as she's mentioned, successes and failures. Um, but somebody who could really, again, meet people where they are and take them through a process and a framework, that's really, really hard to find somebody who can speak almost to the academic side, the real world side, and also the emotional side and sit across the table and facilitate. And so I remember I reached out to Seda to see if she knew of anybody and we were <laughs> sitting downstairs at Starbucks and she's like, well, like, what about me? Like, what am I, chopped liver? Like, I would be totally interested in this and it was almost like you me you know <laughs> and uh and I just remember having like almost being enveloped in this like feeling of like yes like this is exactly what we need in terms of really the the subject matter expertise and the one-on-ones I think that yeah. that's a differentiator of our program is as she mentioned there's a lot of boot camps there's a lot of training I would say but the the piece that people really struggle with is that that the personal aspect and the accountability and just the kind of getting it from A to B. Why do, why do people fall off the wagon in terms of making stuff happen? I think it's kind of that the journey. And I think there's so much to be taught in that process, especially for veterans in terms of, you know, how do you experience failure? You know, sometimes veterans need to just be taught, like, this is how it works. You know, Seda often makes comments about, you know, the relationship of co-founders and just, you know, how sometimes veterans don't seem to really understand having lanes. I always say there's no such thing as a co-company command in the military. Um, everything in a startup is about that team and, and developing that team and growing that team from scratch. And so um, I think we have a nice kind of complementary skill set with experience that um, really works well. And I think sometimes with incubators um, and accelerators and these other programs here, it's boot camps and those type of training things or even panels and workshops are easy metrics. They're easy to measure. This many people went through it. This many people graduated. This many companies were started. And those companies happen to raise this much money at some point in their life cycle, which is great. And those are very important metrics. But what it what it what you end up losing out of that is sometimes entrepreneurship isn't right for that person. So, you know, being careful not to validate for the sake of self-validation, you know, creating an environment where people can self-validate that this is something that they should do. So sometimes what we find is um, that maybe this isn't the right idea or the right business for that entrepreneur. We create an environment that they can explore that and then it also be okay to kind of go on the off ramp and maybe come back and do another business, try another, try to solve another problem. Maybe that wasn't the right problem that you should be solving. Um, and that's not as sexy of a metric. And, mm -hmm. and it takes sometimes a lot longer mm -hmm. and then sometimes it's just not right for you. So to us having, being able to say somebody stop throwing good money after bad at this, if this isn't it for you, let's, let's focus, let's focus you on what will work for you. So it's not so much the, the idea is bad. It's the yeah. execution on the idea can well, need some well, help. Some, yeah. It depends. It depends. It depends. Because yeah. the right idea has to be paired with the right person to yes. follow up with it yes. and being done at the right time. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about ideas, we we really try to focus people into not the idea, but what is the problem you're solving? So are you solving the right problem for the right person at the right time where they care enough to give you money 
to solve it that is more than it costs you to make the solution. That all, that is all a business is at the end of the day. Well, you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. That's, <laughs> that's the it. equation. That's it. That's it. Mike We're going to call that's it, it. Yeah. problem solved. But that's not, yeah. that's a lot harder than you than think it, it is. really is. Absolutely. Well, it's, and it's sometimes very personal. Yes. And that's, I think, the, the area that we take very seriously and also tread lightly on because, yeah. like Seda mentioned, sometimes, um, I would say more often than not, what someone comes in the door with is not what they come out with. Mm-hmm. But it's oftentimes, and I think this is so important in the veteran community, it's the attributes of that person um, and how they ultimately, like we talk about this a lot in terms of like when you meet somebody who really gets it and you're just like, okay, like support them, whatever they need. Um and, and that's really fun to work with that person because they really are almost like redirecting and pushing them forward. It's and, and not everybody is as like clean and easy as that. More often than not, I would say that's the that's the direction. Um, sometimes they don't even know if um, they're ready to start a company. Like like said, I mentioned they come in and out like they might go work for a company and then come back and start something or they might be an entrepreneur in a business. So that's where I think this personal piece is very important is to kind of hold up that mirror and say, um, you know, is this the right direction for you to go in Um, and kind of taking them through those kind of tried and true frameworks. Um, And it's not necessarily our job to, you know, to 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 validate. validate. It's to give people almost the, the walk them through questions that they can ask themselves and they can ask their environment to see whether they can decide whether this is for them or not. Like, it's not our job to, you know, and we can't like, I mean, but it's, we want to make sure that everybody's going into this eyes wide open. Um, You know, two things of people that come into us is one is we have a lot of people that come in with a solution in search of a problem, which is the most expensive business to start because you basically have to find a customer. Then you have to convince the customer that they have a problem and then you have to convince them that your solution is what they need to buy from you. And that is so much harder to do so much longer, so much more expensive. Um, And we tend to have to almost shake the solution off of people and dig down and like, why did you build this? What was that value proposition that you went after Mm -hmm. to, and built a solution around. And sometimes when we start stripping away the solution, we find that core passion that they actually have and then their solution goes in a different direction, but they are solving that core passion they tried to solve to begin with. Are, are we talking about the t-shirt thing again? Because I feel <laughs> like what you're what you're talking about right now is the thing that I see so much of is like – and doing this podcast is funny mm-hmm. because I talk to a lot of veteran entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and I cannot tell you how many guys I've had to like say, you know what? I'm going to try and get to you. Mm. And your T-shirt company, because mm. everybody has an apparel thing. Mm. It feels like there's a solution. Mm-hmm. I've, uh, this uh, X Y Z veteran T-shirts. Right. Well, what? What are you trying to do? What with are you it? trying to do with it? Because there's like mm. a thousand of mm-hmm. us. A thousand of us. What? What? What are you trying to accomplish here? Maybe it's not so much they want to design T-shirts, but maybe they want to design. Exactly. Or they want to bring a certain group of people together under one emblem. Is there another way to do that outside of apparel? Mm -hmm. You know, can you start a podcast that brings that community together so that you can talk with each other instead of, you know, having a T-shirt? So one example I can think of, and I won't obviously, you know, tell the name of the company or the person, but it was really interesting just to see how... um, how verbose they were with one other concept versus what they were working on. It was almost like a different person. Like, and, and that's fun too. And it's like, just let's look over here and, and talk about this for a second. It's like, that, 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 that you can't shut them up. Um, so sometimes again, it's like just putting them in better lighting or a different angle um, sometimes makes all the difference in the world just to sort of uncover like what's the real purpose behind what you're trying to do. And I think there's a real integrity to that as well, Mm -hmm. because it will rear its ugly head at some point. And again, Seda and I are not by any means claiming that like you are, you know, you will work, you will not. Yes. And and that's actually a (laughs) problem when people are looking for that validation, because that's the 
big scary world of entrepreneurship. Like well, there people is, want that. They, yes. they want to know it's going to succeed. That's well, why you don't. We can't tell them that. But this is the thing. A lot of veterans look for that. They oh, they're course. looking for that validation. And so we. So this is like also the head fake of like it's messy. Like there isn't necessarily like a training manual that you can check off to go down and everything will be great and you'll go on to the next rank and you know well that's what we're looking for isn't it that's our structure we we know that to right. achieve this you have to have so many so many years yes. times in service yes. you need to accomplish these things and if you accomplish one of five of these things right. chances are you're going to be selected for promotion right. you your business right. will succeed so my question is, why aren't you guys making a book and why are we just doing this? I right. Mean well, and I just want to add one more thing to that that timeline mm -hmm. is as soon as I realize that I am going to get promoted to founder of a company, oh, I need to go get my MBA because it's training time. I need to go through a certain training class mm -hmm. or period where I am then prepared to go to the next step. So and that risk. is, it's a risk, risk. It, yes. and it's like shaking that off of them. And then the other misconception that we get a lot of besides bringing the solution in search of a problem is you sit down and they say, well, you know, why, why are you want to start a business? I don't, I want to be, I don't want a boss. And I, oh, I hate that. Cause I'm just like, you realize, especially as an entrepreneur and you, every customer is your boss. Every employee you have is actually your boss. Every investor is your boss. You will have so many bosses, you will not know what to do with yourself. Can you choose what time of the day you work? Yeah. But maybe. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But um, so, you know, under it's it's not only kind of the process, but also kind of like opening. A little. Yeah, like opening yeah. the curtain on what entrepreneurship actually is. And what having your own business actually does. And, you know, talking about the emotional component to it, um, in our startup school, our first class, we dig into the psychology of a founder. We talk about this emotional roller coaster that they're going to go through where some days you're, you know, you are on top of the world. You know, I am queen of the universe. And the next day you're like, what the hell was I thinking by think, you know, even remotely thinking I could start my own business. And then the very next day, you're right back on top. And it's that roller coaster that you almost, you have to know that it's going to come. You still are going to go on it. It's inevitable. Right. But, you know, going through that and what is, and then the added piece that I think, given that we work with veterans and the age demographic we work with and the career um, cycle we work with, we're dealing with a lot of folks that have families. Right. And that have, you know, large, like, kids married with kids. And what is that impact going to have on their families? And how can we prepare them for what's to come as well? And, you know, to a point where um, we actually started stocking Bunker Labs onesies because we had so many founders that were coming through this program that had that were having kids. And so yeah. it just. The, just to these aren't 20 somethings, young 20 somethings that can still live in their parents' basement and or, you know, nickel and dime to be able to start a business. These are folks that have a lot of responsibilities. Actually, I had a guest on episode 34 um, where he talks about, you know, MBAs. Uh, Dartmouth has this program for through Tux University, through Tux Business School. Uh, it's like a two week crash course in business. Get some vets out there, do that. And I'm like, that's great. Do you need an MBA for this? And he's like, maybe. <laughs> but he said, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And I said, okay, well, take me both sides. And he said, okay, so if you want to start, a, if you're going entrepreneurship for, like you said, you have a solution to a problem. You're trying to break into an industry. You're going to tech something big. He's like, you might want to find an MBA program, go in there, make the connections, find people that are of like minds. And now you're going to go that route. But if you're coming in there with something like brand new, it's your thing. 
It's like you don't need an Your MBA. passion. Yeah, you don't need an MBA. You just need right. you need patience. Yeah. You just need to get through. And you need an ecosystem. And that's what, you know, you touched on the ecosystem that the MBA would bring to them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's exactly what we're trying to build and bring here without needing an MBA, without having to go and, you know, go through that whole program. You know, mm-hmm. one of my favorite parts about doing what we are what we get to do every day. And so I listen to entrepreneurship podcasts all the time. That's why I, I was hope very, you listen to the AR of course, okay. and that's why we're so you know <laughs> excited and geeking out over being with you. Um, but if you listen to their to the stories of the entrepreneurs, it was never easy, mm-hmm. especially the ones that look like overnight successes. It took it's an overnight success of ten years in the making, and there's always a moment that changes everything for them. Right. And it's it's produced with hustle, but sometimes it's just an you know a happy accident, a lucky moment, a break from you know that came through the ecosystem that they had built, um, or a contact that they had made, and then all of a sudden the a couple doors open up that then fling open you know the whole market for them. That's that is what our goal is yes. is to create those pivotal moment pivotal moments for those entrepreneurs that take them from hustle, hustle, hustle to, and now I'm on, a, I'm on the precipice of a being, having arrived and being successful. So every day we try to create events, programs, opportunities to connect with different people in the industry where those moments can happen. And it is so cool to see when those things do happen and they come back and be like, Oh, I met so and so at this event. He has now introduced me to this person and this person and this person. Now I have orders. I have purchase orders. I have this, and you just—that's—that's that's like our success. And on that, I think the the veteran component of all this. So we're trying to build this within the veteran community and kind of paying it forward and having veterans set other veterans up for success and kind of as Sato was mentioning, create those big aha moments for them where these are like life-changing experiences that they probably wouldn't have or um, have in that time frame, right? So just maybe accelerate some of those activities, but also like this almost movement of when, you know, the non-veteran business community looks in, yeah. it's like, wow, like they really do like take care of their own. And I think that this is this bigger almost um, discussion. So you know, as new parents, we look up at, you know, the screen at the Capital One Arena and mm-hmm. say, oh, you know, they're doing something for service members. Like, I want my my son or daughter to serve because not only will they have a great experience in the military, they will be connected to this amazing community for the rest, for of, the rest of their life. Like this yeah. amazing alumni organization exactly. and have a better life that they wouldn't have without this. And that I think that's like this bigger piece is like we we're trying to do that, you know, bit by bit, but that's kind of the end state I think. So So yeah. what what it seems like Bunker Labs is kind of it, it's bringing the best parts of what we we're just talking about MBAs where I know my previous my, my uh you know previous guests, prior guests, whichever, they say it's all about your networking. So you're going to get the same education from Harvard as you're going to get anywhere other business school, but it's about the people that you're going to school with. Right. You know, here it seems Bunker Labs is creating that networking location, that place where you can meet like-minded people. And, and especially here in, in the DC area, mm-hmm. this is this is crazy. I moved here from Texas and I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> right. I mean, I there's two things you can, you can, you know, throw a rock without hitting. And that's a, a, a suit. And <laughs> thought an you were going to say a lawyer. <laughs> and a lawyer oh, well, that's three <laughs> things. Lawyers, yeah. suits, and which come in hand in hand. And yeah. an entrepreneur. Everybody yeah. here seems to have some type of some type of hustle. Do you find that? Do, first of all, let me ask you both. How comfortable are you with the word hustle? Because I'm hearing some people it. say, I don't like it. It doesn't sound very professional. But I, I kind of like it. hustle. Yeah. I love, I mean, we talk about side hustles and all that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Cause I think it's not, um, I think Sada mentioned this just a little bit ago, like the grit. Right. So, um, kind of demystifying, like there's a lot of glamor around entrepreneurship and there's a lot of like buzz right now about it. And there's a lot of programs and things going on, but at the end of the day, it's a lot of work and it's, um, it's a hustle and it's not guaranteed. It's, um, it's, 
it's very tough, but it's almost to some extent, like what more noble venture to do with all of the things like all your preparation and studying and service, like now is sort of this, like, that was like the the next battleground almost to test all that. Like, I, I feel like there's almost like a noble um, uh, calling to entrepreneurship, but it, it is not glamorous. And I think that that's the piece that we also try to demystify is it's kind of like, it's, it's sometimes lonely, hence this, you know, this space capital post. Um, uh, you don't come out of the womb knowing what to do. <laughs> hence, you know, startup school and working uh, one-on-one with Seda and our team. So um, I think it's just, it's a tough, it's a tough endeavor that I think, uh, I think hustle is a great word to kind of bring it back. So I think you may, you know, talking about the glamour of, <laughs> business. It, it's so interesting because I had, you know, I'll be the first person to admit my own biases, my own misconceptions of mm-hmm. what it would be like to have my own business. And this podcast started off as a hobby. It, it honestly came from a, you know, a friend of mine started a business and I was like, well, that's really cool. And his story was crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like from beginning to end, this guy made like a uh, like a CrossFit style gym out of an old garage that was like the first car dealership in Round Rock, Texas. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a nightmare, a disaster. And I'm looking at this guy like, bro, you sure you want to do this? Cause how much money did you put? And he's like, all of it. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> right, right. Scary. all of it. He's like, all of them all in. But I, I appreciated the passion. So I said, well, I'm going to start this podcast. We did a podcast episode. I'll do go a little further. You, I, I, and here's a, a bit of advice for anybody. Um, things don't change when you put founder, CEO, or director in front of your name. I thought that once you had that tie, you gave yourself this title, things just fell into place. They don't. Yeah. Um, those problems are still there. Yeah. In fact, I found that the minute I had an LLC, this is got complicated yeah. and I wanted answers. So what I didn't have was Bunker Labs at the time. I am one of those people, and I think a lot of veterans are the same way, that we want someone to talk to. I don't want to look it up online. I don't want YouTube to, you know, especially YouTube. It's great for some things. But, you know, really quick example, I learned how to edit audio from some kid's YouTube video. (laughs) She did makeup tutorials, okay? But she did a tutorial on how she edits her videos. So there's this girl. Good for her. I, right? She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, shout out to that girl. I don't remember her name, but oh, man. you know, she's sitting there twirling her hair. She's like, and then I do this, and then I click here, and then I move this, and I'm like, slow down. <laughs> I have to write this down. I want somebody to talk to. And it seems like Bunker Labs is a place where you can do that. You know, you can actually sit down, talk to some a real person, and ask those tough questions. Like, I know one of the biggest questions I hear a lot from entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs is the legal part. Yeah. Can, is this legal? Can I do that? Well, it's funny that you bring that up because the ex- example that I was just going to say is we had one company that uh, at the time was about five years old, um, had gone through the, the ebbs and flows of different founder sizes, founding team size, and, um, and doing different work in government contracting. And uh, one of the founders of that company was sitting across from me here in the co-working space at Capital Post. And um, another entrepreneur came over, much newer. They were about six, seven months in. And they were going through um, a situation where they had a number of founders and then those founders were splitting up. And he had, he came over to my desk and he said, listen, it's happening. We're splitting up. You know, we, it's finally come. Like we've been talking about this for a few months. We've split up. Three of these people are going this direction Two of the, you know, two of us are going in this direction. And, um, the gentleman who was sitting across from me, he goes, I don't mean to, you know, eavesdrop, but I went through something similar. Here's some legal things that you should take into consideration with this split up. And he like basically gave him his experience in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Um, and those moments, I think, you know, going back to know, the community, like, is, that's because Emily and I aren't 
you know, the keeper of all information by any stretch of the imagine stretch of the imagination. But being able to have that conversation in this safe place mm-hmm. where then somebody can say, oh, by the way, here's some mistakes I made. Don't make these mistakes or make sure you check these boxes. Right. Um, you know, make sure your finances are set up this way. Talk to a lawyer, do this, do that. And it was, you know, he walked away being like, that was the best 15 minute accidental conversation that I've ever had. And where else do you have that? Yeah. That's the question. I mean, it's really, you can Google, you might have a family member who is smart on those things. You might have a friend, but I think it's really hard to find those conversations if you're not mindful and sort of um, seeking them out sometimes. Um, you have to surround yourself with people like yes. like you. I mean, there's so many people who have done this before. I mean, that's the other thing that's kind of humbling is you're kind of just like getting into the assembly line of people who have gone through right? stuff. So that should be comforting in some ways. Uh, it's also just terrifying. terrifying. <laughs> because like, don't you kind of put yourself and say, well, well, why is he doing so well? It's it's the epitome of like, you know, teenager adult. Like right. there's a whole host of people who have done it and made mistakes and don't want you to do it yourself. But you kind of just have to like do it yourself to to learn to learn. But again, if you can offset some of that with the sage advice from those who've done it before you, it's hard though. It that's really the whole is point hard. Of this podcast yeah. is yeah. is that's why that's why I went with an after action review. Because the whole point is, let's talk about what went right. Let's also talk about what went wrong. Oh, yeah. And I find that some of my guests, oh, man, we'll go 45 minutes about what went right. And I come to the, so what What would you do differently? Oh, nothing. Yeah, right. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. You're perfect, right? This, this didn't, nothing went wrong. No, nothing. Yeah. And I, I call it the todo está bien syndrome. Mm. And I, 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 it's Spanish for everything's fine. And when I used to go to South America... And work with other countries, sometimes there was things happening in the background. Like, hey, man, you know that building's on fire, right? No, no, no. Todo right. está bien. No, no, pretty sure. It's that, on fire. Pretty sure it's on fire. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be like that. Like, no, it's not, bro. It's right. not. But we get into that mentality, I think, when you have a business that you can't show any weakness. You can't show any progression. If you show a mistake, my customer's going to think that, you know, we're we're messed up or we're, we're prone to screw up it's like but you're also a human being and the and military is the same way i mean nobody gets way. promoted and they're like let's say all these great things this person's done and let's also share all their dirty laundry of the following areas that they're bad at it's just not a culture where you're like exposing kind of your weaknesses it's and almost, if they do it's always like some generic stuff or it's a weakness that's really a strength yeah like <laughs> right. my biggest problem is i care too much right. or i'm a perfectionist right. like, what is that <laughs> so that i think is a really again going back to this place and this in this feeling is it's like uh, especially when you're starting a company i mean i have strengths that um uh, and i have weaknesses that are status you know strengths and weaknesses and vice versa and I think that that's the piece that there's this feeling of like, I have to be good at everything across the board. And if I'm not, it's somehow a reflection of me personally or my business. And it's like, holy crap. Like, no, like this, it's all about knowing what you're good at. I mean, this is the one area of life where like focusing on what you're good at is like, yes. You like got to put all your chips right, in there. Nobody cares if you didn't get a good grade in this subject. Like right. focus on what you did well in and so then surrounding you- yourself with the people And building that team up. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, Going back to why this is so important is like, where do you find that person to offset what you're weak at? How do you develop that relationship? How do you pay them or not pay them or bring them on? And I think that that's an area that I can't emphasize enough is really hard for people to have that conversation sooner than later. Because the worst thing is like, God, I really need to hire X, Y, Z. And I have no idea where that person lives or what they look like or what they do or how do you yeah. balance the notion that, you know, sometimes I hear people say, it's just business. It's just business. I'm not, I don't take it personally, it's just business. But at the same time, your business is very personal. I mean, this is what you're investing your time, your energy. I tell people business is like a baby. You know, what you don't want is for somebody to walk by and go, you got another baby. <laughs> that's another baby. Yeah. And you may think like, hey, man, but to you, that yeah. baby's beautiful yeah. because that's yours. You've yeah. worked so hard on development. But when you're starting off, you do have an ugly baby. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. I wrote a whole blog about my ugly baby about a year ago about my podcast. I'm like, I know it's rough, you know, I'm, but I'm learning. Right. 
how do you balance between saying it's personal and it's just business? I think that's a great, great question. I think that it's, you know, it's just business is almost like a way to defer criticism and defer almost the, 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 the personal nature of it. Um, I think so much of what we do and we're included in this. So is getting feedback and internalizing that feedback and knowing that you're a work in progress and always growing and having to incorporate that. And it never stops, unfortunately, like it just also that being around people that can give that feedback in a way that helps you and ultimately makes you better um, versus just, you know, busting your chops or, you know, giving you feedback that's not helpful for the sake of it. So I think that giving people those opportunities, like leading into the muster, that's a great opportunity for folks to engage and get feedback on what they're working on um, with the community that's there to support. But uh, yeah. yeah. Starting a business is like kind of a business is a business, but the passion should be around. And this is again, kind of shaking the solution off of people and so that they understand the problem that they're solving and who they're solving it for. As a founder, you are a servant to your customers and to the people that you're solving a problem for. So if you have an idea and it's an ugly baby, mm-hmm. it's it, you're you're you have an ugly baby because your customers want an ugly baby. The customers that you are going after at that moment, you know, you have like if you want to talk academic, you have your market adoption curve, right? Mm-hmm. And you you when you're starting a business, you build a business for innovators and early adopters of your market adoption curve. And if they want an ugly baby because they want to be part of the process about making your business better and work better, then they don't want something that's super pretty and already, you know, has a bow wrapped around the top of it. So it's it's a little bit of shaking the hubris off of people. And instead of trying to decide in my closed office or my basement whether this is a good idea or not, why don't you go ask the people that are going to one day pay for you to do this, whether this is a good idea or not. And if it is, then, you know, no matter what you, they think your baby is gorgeous too. Mm -hmm. You know, they're part of that process with you and you're, you're selling to the right person at the right time of your life cycle of your company's life cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, Your late majority or even your early majority might still think you have an ugly baby, but who cares? You're not selling to them. You're not solving their problem. You're solving the innovators and the early adopters problem. And then you'll get to them later and you'll make your baby prettier or whatever it needs to be when you get to that point. I had not considered the fact that somebody might want the ugly baby so that they can help you develop that thing. Yes. And be part of the process. Part of the process. I had not considered that. That's a really interesting perspective. Early adopters and innovators are your best first employees that pay you for the privilege of being an employee. They want to be part of the process so that they can one day say, I knew that company when, and oh, I gave them that idea. You know, we all have those friends that, you know, they take a band and, you know, they say, well, I saw that band five years ago. Uh, You're just hearing about it. Everybody has that friend. You might be that guy. I don't know. But... (laughs) But but those are the people mm-hmm. that you sell to first, because right. if you don't get through those people, your early majority won't even touch you because their thing is they want to see those yes. those people that do go after the cool stuff to, you know, say, oh, well, oh, OK, you know, like so and so's tried it. So and so's tried it. They they won't stop evangelizing it. I'll give it a go. So if you you know, if you skip those people. You are skipping your development. Right. You are skipping the ability to get out the door faster with something that doesn't have to be perfect. And you get this like instant feedback loop, which is, you know, which is exactly what you need and potentially added bandwidth to a company that you might be doing on your own. So wouldn't it hurt? You know, what, what would it hurt to have a couple extra people to help you do testing and help get the word out mm. to be that, you know, little bit of viral marketing that it's so hard and unpredictable to get. And here's the head fake. You're de-risking the process. Exactly. Which is like 
ta-da, you know, I mean, everyone talks about risk and it feels so crazy to start mm -hmm. a company and I'm throwing my life out there. Like this process actually de-risks that process. Right. So wow. it's very comforting when you actually like lay down exactly. all of that and just kind of be a student of that process and realize, wow. And then when I'm ready to scale, I've gone through all, I've, exactly. I've done all my testing and I've like learned from my mistakes and failure. And now I'm really ready to grow. And investors right. love that you've gone through that process. So if, if money is going to be the barrier to your scaling, you've already checked all the boxes of testing, validating, and also creating traction with, with only having to go out to a very limited amount of people. Right. So investors love that. Yeah. We always ask like, who, who, okay, so who are your customers? Who's where, like, what? and they're like, well, I haven't met with like it's like this deep stuff. I can't put it out there, and it's so like, you don't know if anybody wants this. Right. Exactly. You, oh, you, good. your mom thinks it's a good idea, right. and your oh, wife thinks yeah. you're pretty smart. Yeah. And or my or my favorite is, um, oh, you know, I, I have a um, hundred beta users. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. How many of them do you not know? And they're like, well, I mean, most of them are like my friends or my family, and I'm, and I, and I, I'm just. My mom Tell thinks me, I'm handsome. Yeah, I do, exactly. Yeah. I was like, come back when you have gotten a hundred people who don't know who you are, but all they know is that you solve a problem for them. And, and, you know, sometimes they also ask, cause we, we, we're a big proponent of doing these conversations in person and they say, well, how do I know if I've nailed it? You know? And I said, trust me, they will be reaching across the table. You'll see them physically move closer to you. Eyes get bigger, voice gets louder. And then, you know, you've nailed a problem. And they can't wait to give you money to solve that problem. And they don't even care what your solution is. They just know that you get them, you've heard them, and they just put the two and two together and they're like, all right, this guy's gonna solve it for me. You know, one thing that we that we see a lot of is, I know I need a co-founder. Uh, I mean, I'll give you the conversation. You, know, you sit down with somebody and they're, you know, you, they're like, all right, I need a co-founder. Okay, you know, what what are some of the gaps that you're trying to fill with this co-founder? I need tech, I need this. And I said, so what's your issue with finding a co-founder? Well, I can't find anybody that will just do what I want them to do. Hmm. And yeah. and I think it's a little bit of kind of the the military sneaking in right. of there being, again, going back to one person leaving. in charge. And, and I say, that's an employee, um, not a co-founder, a co-founder is somebody that, you know, you may agree 80% of the time. And that's a lot, uh, but they may pull you in another direction and you guys then together decide what direction to take. It's not somebody that's going to take orders from you and that's going to do exactly what you tell them to do and exactly the right way, you know, when what you think the right way to do it is. Mm. And it's not a, it's almost, I mean, they just want to build a company with employees with them at the helm. So think of times in the military, right? Where that was like, all right, we're a team. Like, let, what's your, this is your role. This is my role. Go. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of great work in small teams but it's often a mission that's being given to you and you're sort of doing your own thing, but you kind of have your left and right limits. So I think that's a huge, huge thing that we're trying to teach people and trying to show like, this is what right looks like in terms of this. And you might, this behavior might've have not have been modeled to you. And again, a very formative time in your life where you're learning about leadership and learning about how to work in groups. And, you know, like that's a very important dynamic that I sometimes feel like, um, I, guess, I think we can just sh show that behavior and what right looks like for veterans. I think that's interesting because I can't tell you how many times I've heard entrepreneurs, even on this show, that they refer to themselves as I'm kind of like the commander and I have a first sergeant and, have, and, and they put it in a military structure. I'm like, yeah, how's that working out for you? Because I'm kind of curious. Um, that may not, that doesn't sound like the smartest way to go. I think that guys, and I think, again, I think maybe this is why I see a lot of people from the soft community, the special operations community. They do really well in the world of entrepreneurship, not because they're quote unquote special, but because they're used to working in small groups where everybody has a designation. Everybody has a, has a job. 
And there is always a guy who's like, I command this group. I'm I'm the dude. I'm the where the buck stops. But I'm also. I also understand, like, I don't know everything, so I depend on this team to give me all my options, to feed me information so I can make the decision that we're all going to work with, work within. And I think that's why those guys are so good in the world of business. The Jockos, the, the, um, you know, oh boy, I'm now drawing a blank for all the SF guys that are all the soft guys that are in, in business, but a lot of Navy SEALs, a lot of Green Berets, they all come out there and that's why they're so effective. Um, I want to talk really quick, but let's talk about uh, the muster. Yes. We've got a muster coming up yes. and, and, what what is a muster? So, <laughs> I, yeah, go for so it. the muster. Um, so one, the muster is actually a national um, activity. So every city that's part of the Bunker Labs network um, has a muster. So I say that we are uh, very excited to be the first city in the country that kicks it off uh, in DC. But the muster is our one day kind of one afternoon activity to bring the entire veteran business community together for. Um, the opportunity to connect, get feedback, showcase their organizations, um, meet people that might be able to help them. So it's all about bringing this ecosystem together for one afternoon to really shine a spotlight on veteran entrepreneurship um, and also show the impact that they're making really not only in the, you know, the Washington, D.C. region, but beyond that and, and it, the impact on the veteran business community. And also, you know, to showcase some some of the companies that have gone through our program over the last year that have grown or launched, build something out. So, you know, it's their opportunity to tell their story as well as potentially inspire the next person to, right. to kick it off. And, you know, last year during our muster, we had a number of companies that now are showcasing at this one mm -hmm. because, you know, they went from, I'm kicking around an idea. I don't know if it's a thing or not, but look at all these other people that have done this. Maybe I can do it too. Yeah. To now they they have a company. They've either, you know, it started as a side hustle and now they're working on it full time. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they were just kicking it off and now found this community and now they've been entrenched with us for so long that they want to give back and kind of pay it forward to inspire. So, yeah. so when and where? So the muster is Thursday, March 8th. Um, it's at District Winery in Washington, D.C. Gorgeous, gorgeous venue. Um, we put a lot of thought in sort of the design and the feel and just the kind of um, uh, type of connection that we want that venue to create. Um, it's from 12 to 6 in the afternoon. So it's an afternoon event. Uh, mm. There's co-working on site, which I can't emphasize enough. Uh, we realize that life goes on and you might have a conference call or a meeting you have to take. And we've um, created this experience with that in mind to kind of give you the opportunity to, to you know, jump out for a second, take a call and re-engage. Um, and it's very focused on connection this year. Um, last year was our first event and we really focused a lot on the content and really showcasing, you know, this is who we are at Bunker Labs DC at Capitol Post and what we're trying to do. This year, we're really kind of turning the lens onto our companies and helping them showcase and elevating them through uh, through the muster. Awesome. Why should anybody go? Because it's the one stop shop almost for everybody in D.C. that you need to connect with, whether it's um, industry experts, angel investors, venture capital, subject matter experts, people that are kind of the people you need to know in this space. I mean... Um, Sade and I do a lot of events throughout the year. Um, this is sort of like the Super this Bowl. Is it. This of, is it. It's uh, all coming down. Veteran to... business activity for yeah. one afternoon. And we oh, put a lot of thought into yeah. the people that we're inviting to really make it the biggest bang for your buck um, in one afternoon. So if you don't come to this, it's almost like you have to go and then piecemeal all, all of this How together. How dare you so. if you don't show up to this? Exactly. Jeez, exactly. you want to be an entrepreneur and you're not showing up to the biggest event and the veteran. I know. It's almost like your wedding. Like I would like to go as an attendee and an experience, you know, outside of like running it just because so you, it's such a great, there's so many great people. I mean, I think that's the one piece people always come away with is, wow, like mm -hmm. what a quality event with quality people. 
great content, obviously. We could talk about that. But I think it's just like, where else do you find like the quality of these types of people for one afternoon? You know, right. so. and, and that being, and with all that being said, we've actually um, have modeled the content around not being talked at so much because the value of this is that connection is almost like facilitating conversation and facilitating meeting people that you will need to see whether it's to inspire or to get funding or to get a subject matter expert to help you do xyz so you know to that point some of the content that we are doing is we're doing um kind of a ceo panel of folks that have gone through this and um have come out high on the other end um we're doing an investor panel because we know that that's a you know, that's, that's a, huge. That's huge. Yeah. People want to know timeless, where the money is coming from yeah. Um, yeah. and, you know, bring in a number of different capital options um, op- and investment options. We're also doing a startup gallery to showcase those companies over the last year that um, that we've been working with and where they're at. Um, we're also doing a pitch showcase where you can dive in a little bit deeper into what somebody is doing um, and then also sh- to sh- look see this is what a pitch looks like i know sometimes that we don't know you know i get tons of decks saying oh does this is my pitch deck does this look okay and it's like no um but that's okay (laughs) but that's that's okay okay. because you've never you've never seen a pitch before (laughs) and so how how would you know that this is what it looks like and so being able to get that exposure um and then from there obviously having that reception and networking opportunities to make those connections when you see you know, certain person on the stage and being able to then talk to them later on. I mean, that's really where we've we've heard people have value. Nobody wants to be talked at. We'll also have, I think what's really great this year is we have a number of partners that are coming to the muster that um, really see the value of the veteran business and startup community. So organizations like PenFed that have a number of veteran entrepreneurship initiatives that they're trying to use the muster as the platform to engage with their audience. Um, SOSI International out in Reston, uh, JP Morgan Chase. So there's also value for a lot of the partners that are engaging with us. And again, going back to this passing the baton amongst all of these people. Um, so it's it's fun to sort of bring this figure this year. So I don't have to have a business to show up, right? There's yeah, no, there's not, not going to be a guy at the front that's like, show me a business card. You can't come in. Yeah. Like anybody can show up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Going back to meeting people where they are. So if you're thinking about entrepreneurship, if you're looking for a job, even, I yeah. mean, this is a great opportunity to even connect with small businesses, large businesses who might be looking for talent. So we would encourage people that maybe aren't starting a company to Um, Because this is going to be the D.C. business community and a a great slice across it. So it makes sense to um, to come. And you can be part of the startup community. And if that's something that's interests you, you don't have to be the founder. You know, you can be part of a team. and, And sometimes that's the best role for people. And they get all the things that they want out of the experience by being part of that team and not being, you know, it doesn't always have to be your idea. Right. Um, and this is an opportunity to also kind of see what's out there. And if there's some, you know, some places that you can start to plug yourself in. Um, and, you know, we, we, you know, we talk about the side hustle, even if this is something that you want to build on the side that you're not going to quit your job for until, you know, a certain point, that's okay too. You know, going back to, you don't have to have that business card and, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be tech. It doesn't have to be GovCon. It doesn't have to be kind of those traditional startups. We have folks that have um, popcorn companies, ketchup and barbecue companies, bakeries, um, yeah. across, you know, from food and beverage to apparel to you know, to tech services yeah. and um, yeah. personal cybersecurity companies. It's across the board. Yeah. Which I think is really fun. So we're kind of, we're industry agnostic, um, but veteran specific and spouse yeah. as well. I, I can't emphasize enough that yeah. um, military spouses and family members are encouraged to come as well. They are part of this community. Um, so they're no less of a status because uh, so veteran spouses and family members as well. And we have a good mix yeah. of, you know, spouses that use our program here at Capital Post and Bunker Labs. Because what entrepreneurship does for especially for spouses of active duty military is it allows them to potentially create a portable career so that they don't have to start over every time 
you know, every two years when they, you know, their family has moved to a new place. So this is their opportunity to build something that's theirs and that they can carry with them. And, and we've gotten some amazing ideas and amazing companies that have come out of spouses. It's like, where else in the world is the word spouse? Yeah. Like a yeah. thing, you yeah, know, that's true. So it is kind of funny that like the spouses have, you know, we have to like deliberately talk about them because, you know, sometimes they're like, well, I'm not part of this community. It's right. like, absolutely. You are. That's another word. It's like spouse. Spouses are welcome at, at Bunker Labs at Capital Post. And so. all of this information is going to be available uh, on this podcast. When you yes. if you guys look up or down, depending on what what medium you're watching this on, you will see the date, the time, the location. Uh, the event, everything's going to be there posted as well as a, a website address to, to go get more information. And of course, uh, points of contact will be uh, on this uh, on this post as well. Right now, there is a veteran sitting there listening to this. They're like, man, this Bunker Lab thing sounds like a good idea. I'm not <laughs> sure. What's your advice to somebody who has an idea and it's the next thing in their mind? What should they do? Come to the muster. Yeah. Uh, come to the muster. Come to the muster. Besides that, let's say they they think they, they listen to this in April, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously we just passed the muster. Um, go to bunkerlabs.org and look at what all the different programming there is. Also go to the capitalpost.com, capital with an O, um, and look and sign up for coming and meeting with us and ch- come in and chat and let's see where this goes. Yeah. I would say don't ignore that feeling. It's, it's, exactly. um, I think that's the challenge after service is those nine, like shoulda, coulda, woulda. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're really merging. And I say this often under the super highway of civilians and, um, it's the rest of your life. Like trans- that's a great analogy. Yeah, transition does not stop. Like we often joke, you know, I've transitioned and I check that off and now it's over. Um, the big head fake is it's actually not over and it never ends. And so I would just say, like, explore that. And what's the fear behind that idea or um, you know, what's what's getting in the way? And I think that that's what we're here for is to work with people. I mean, that's our job. That's our um, kind of superpower. And, and uh, being kind of the non-veteran, what I've noticed is... Transition doesn't always happen during the transition period. Yes. <laughs> so what what we think of as the normal transition is as you leave the military and go into civilian life, right? right? But sometimes you're not ready at that point to have that conversation in your head, to have that that moment. You're just getting out and you're going to go to the next thing and almost the path of least resistance, which is probably not going to be entrepreneurship. But a few years later is you're going, okay, this is not where I want to be. Now, like, this is where, this is entrepreneurship or going in a different direction with my career that I, is my true transition. Now I get it and I can move on to the next thing. Absolutely. And and I, I use the analogy of um, the, so, if, you know, kids coming out of college that are going to play in the NFL, Right. During that first week uh, of playing in the NFL, they go through that financial class. That's like a day or whatever. Nobody pays attention. You know, they just got money. Yeah. They just got like millions of dollars. They're not paying attention. They're in the NFL and they're not ready for that conversation. And it's that same thing of like, let's give it to them that, you know, they need to hear it then because some people will pick it up then. Then some people will pick it up after a year. Some people will need it five years later. Mm-hmm. And it's delivering that content a number of times and helping them through that transition and at a number of different points throughout their career so that you hit as many people as possible. We love when someone comes in that's maybe three to five years out because the analogy we often use is they're not shiny anymore. Like they're sort of in between. They're like in that purgatory where they're kind of far enough from the service um, that that's not close enough, but they're not feeling as connected yet on the other side. So where do they go? Like, where do you go at that point when you're just not shiny anymore and people don't identify you as being in the service? Um, that's tough. Like, that's a real challenging place to find yourself in. And I think that's where a lot of the kind of more negative stuff happens. Um, 
So I think that it's really important to realize that the this discussion, there's a lot of talk about like, you know, moving up the transition discussion, talking about the stuff on active duty. Totally agree. And I think that's a great, you can't start these conversations soon enough because you're going to transition at some point. However, I think we also need to like move that dial back and realize that everybody is ready for this conversation at a different point. And for some folks, it is like they need to sort of see and experience the business world before they're ready to have those discussions. And that's okay too. Like it, it's, it's not a one size fits all with respect to that. Um, you know, that transition, I, the word transition is almost like it's Very tough true. because um, I wish we could come up with a new word. Maybe that's something you can ask, you know, future podcast people, like what's a better word for transition? We'll figure something. Cause it just sounds too finite. I'm and I make sure I trademark it too. Yes. Yeah. Sounds I, good. I love being around people that just have this like quest for knowledge to come back right. and grow and learn. And, um, and, and, and Sada and I often talk about like iterations, like yep. how do you give people almost the repetitions in business? That's a big thing. Like just cutting their teeth, getting those reps in so they can catch up to their civilian counterparts who may have had that experience just a little bit earlier um, and kind of merge that experience from the service with the, with the business world. I think the best way to get a hold of us is probably our website. Um, so to say to mention earlier, that go to the Bunker Labs website, www.bunkerlabs.org, or go to the Capital Post website, which is www.thecapitalpost, and capital with an O, like uscapital.com. It's probably the best way to engage with us. And also, if you are not in the Washington, D.C. area, that is okay, because when you go to BunkerLabs.org, you can find all the different locations and chapters that, um, and find the one that's closest to you. All right. Now, I, uh, I've just recently started doing some of the Bunker Lab stuff. Um, okay. I have, I'm, I'm ske- I got skeptical hippo eyes, <laughs> and I was super skeptical when it came to Bunker Labs. I'm, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that just seems... <clears throat> Uh, that's the one level. So okay. when I when I started with Bunker Labs, I was I approached very tenderly, like, well, who are you people? And what do you what do you <laughs> want from me? That was basically, I'll be honest, that was my first impression was sure. what do you want from me? Uh I I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid and I'm not writing you a check. <laughs> so uh I can tell you whoever's listening, it, no, I haven't written a check yet, <laughs> and no one's asked me to drink any Kool-Aid. Nope. So the only thing that I have been asked to do is participate and uh you have an online uh, i think it's a pilot program right this is the first time it's going on mm-hmm. uh can you tell me a little bit about that program so the launch lab online is a um 20 week program that digs into all the different components of starting a business especially for those who are dipping their toe into this um, we actually have a number of active military uh, service members from around the world right now on the program I believe we're in week four of the current yeah. cohort. Um, but what we are doing is we are going to begin to engage those folks that are online in all the regions throughout the country. So it's an online program that will have an in-person presence as well. So if you are interested in kind of learning about what all of this entrepreneurship stuff is, create, you know, tap into an online community. Um, so it's not just about, watching videos and reading stuff on the internet. It's, you know, we have very active Facebook um, groups. We have in-person activities that are going to be connected with it. This is a great way to just get involved. And if you then want to ramp that up, you can, you know, in your communities. So it's a great way to kick in the tires, I think, with a platform and then have that human piece, which is really nice. The other thing is national. So I think if there's international. Yeah. If there's one thing to take away, like there's a SEDA and a me in every city across the country. Like that's pretty cool. Uh, Or 17 cities across the country. Soon Soon to be every. Soon to be every. Every state. You heard it here, folks. They have cloned them. (laughs) Post it. That's why they call it Bunker Labs, right? It's a lab. They're just cloning you guys. Exactly. Exactly. I like it. Exactly. That's really cool. 
so, but frightening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> frightening. So I, I got to tell you, um, so far, my experience with the launch lab has been great. Awesome. Um, I want to apologize publicly to the people that are in my group. I have been MIA for about two weeks. I suck, but I have been listening. I've been reading all the posts. I've just been so wrapped up with editing and I'm sure I'm not the only one there's because we're all business owners and when should we, you know, well, most of us are, are business owners in some way, shape or form. Um, I like the fact that you guys took into account business is still going on during your event. So if you've got a conference call or something, guys, just jump in the car. You got a couple minutes and come back and have a monster. You got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Plug but, in, get some emails done in the co-working space, come back in. So and, do you have any yeah. parting shots? Do you have any, as you're, as you're riding away into the sunset, any last parting shots for, for our listeners? I would say jump in. This is going to be the riskiest thing you've ever done is starting a business. And that's okay. And we're, we're here to make it not feel like you're crazy. My parting shot would be like, where else would you go? So that's what I often think about. If there wasn't a capital post, if there wasn't a bunker labs, like where would I go to start a company or explore what my next career would be like? I think we're very privileged as the veteran community to have this. Um, again, most civilians don't, mm -hmm. they maybe have an alumni organization or they have a great network of their own or they're in an industry that's very organized. I think we need to start taking more pride as the veteran business community to say like, this is ours, this is our group. Um, and, um, and that's what I would just ask is like, where else would you go in addition to this uh, if you didn't have it? So We should get some t-shirts done. Yeah. With uh, that scene from an officer and a gentleman, or was it? Was it like, I got nowhere else to go. I got, I got nowhere else to go. Yeah, like the Bunker Labs, you have nowhere else to go. I like it. There you, there you go. Here, right? Join us. Boom. One of your t-shirt companies. Yeah, there you go, guys. That's a freebie. Get it before Grunt Styles takes it because uh, <laughs> they, they're they're quick on that. Maybe gun. that will be like one of our giveaways. Like, do your oh. do your best Richard Gear impersonation yeah. oh, from officer to gentleman oh and get rods all over that one i am yeah. not <laughs> <laughs> so not all right, all right. so thank that's you. it i want to thank you guys for uh thank both you. taking time out of your very busy schedules to talk with me today um i want to thank uh mr christopher mcphee you guys uh if you guys are watching this on youtube which i certainly hope you are there's a camera right here. i'm not used to having a camera this is like <laughs> weird to me um but I want to thank Chris McPhee from Green Beret uh, Media, uh, Sniper Eye. This guy over here is just phenomenal. The cameras are uh, a welcome touch. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a face for radio, but we're going to deal with that later. I need a stylist. Maybe one of your guys is like yeah, yeah actually, we, yeah. we may have somebody to help you out. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right, folks. March 8th, DC Muster. Use promo code AAR Muster, all one word. Alpha Alpha Romeo, Mike Uniform, Sierra Tango, Echo Romeo. All one word to get $10 off the general admission. Bunker Labs is all over the country, folks. Find the closest one to you and get involved today. www.bunkerlabs.com. All these links and more are available for you at our website, theaarpodcast.com. There you'll find more information about my guests today as well as the AAR Podcast Store, where you can purchase some of my favorite books, some of them have to do with business. Some of them are related to the previous episodes with other guests. And, of course, my all-time favorite nootropic, Alpha Brain. If you don't have Alpha Brain, what's wrong with you? You must hate your business. I don't know what to tell you. Don't forget to like, listen, subscribe, and share this podcast. And I will see you 